Hey friends, it's Charles here, and as I constantly say, this channel is not about objectivity or being a mid middle ground moderator. It's about my relationship to nerd culture and my perspective to nerd culture and culture in general. Um, and today being Juneteenth, I am planning a series of videos where I talk about African Americans in nerd culture and the importance of Juneteenth and that recognition. And so I figured this first video will be explaining my relationship to Juneteenth and why it's so special to me outside of the wider context and the obvious. Um, when I was coming up in the early 80s, um, you know, I, I, it was it was a time of heightened racism that wasn't so much under um, kept under the covers, but it was it was more blatant and it was more out in the open. And my parents addressed this in two different ways. My father was the type to keep his head down stay in the background, not raise a fuss. My mother was one to um, approach things more aggressively. But one thing that was always taught to me and I didn't understand until I got a little bit older was to be leery of strange people that you do not know because you can get in a situation that will get you hurt for no other reason than your skin color. And as I got older in elementary school, that's something I learned. And, you know, I didn't feel safe in a public park without my group of friends. And, uh, you know, when, when, a few, when a few left, we all left. But as a child, knowing nothing about Juneteenth and its historical context, what the day was for me, it was a day where I could go to the public park and be safe. It was a safe zone. Filled with people from my church, from my school, from the community at large, and a lot of people that look like me, and a lot of people that, from other races, but, you know, embraced the black community as well. And I remember being so excited for Juneteenth because it meant I could be in the public park and play and enjoy some barbecue and enjoy some great live music without fear of being jumped or attacked or even accosted verbally and speaking of the live music that is where I the spark of my love of music began was uh you know they would it, it was it was rather informal at the time but uh they would have the church band bring out the generator and their musical instruments and they would have kind of a jam session, um, you know, when they would play stuff they, they didn't play at church. They played the blues, they played some jazz. And when the music started, while all the other kids were running around, playing, participating in activities, I was sitting in front of the stage, mesmerized by the guitars and the bassist. And I, I would spend the whole afternoon just sitting there. And, you know, it, it was like I was, I was surrounded by hundreds of people. But when that music started, it was just me and the band. And that led to me becoming a musician later in life. And, you know, a couple of cool experiences I've had was... You know, when I, when I first started playing out and about and playing gigs locally, uh, the bassist, who was no longer with us, but he came to one of my early gigs. And, you know, I explained to him where that love and that, that spark came from. And he was, and he was impressed with, you know, my bass playing. And, you know, swore that I was better than he was, but I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie, dude was heavy. I think he was just being kind. But then even after that, once I established my name locally, I had the opportunity to play for that same Juneteenth celebration. And for about the last 15 years, I've done 
all but two of them. Now, one got rained out. Another one um, got postponed for another reason. And uh, this year I'm taking it off because I'm having a particularly uh, difficult time with my disability flaring up and causing me excess pain and a lot of immobility. But, um, you know, as long as I'm a, as long as I'm alive, I will be a part of future celebrations. And it was cool that, you know, uh, my buddy I play music with, uh, we were playing last year. And this kid, every time we started playing, this kid would kind of walk up and just stare at us with his jaw on the floor. And I noticed it. And my buddy, he, he in between songs, he, he reached over and tapped me on the shoulder. He's like, hey, hey, there you are. <laughs> and so I got to, you know, I, 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 I had the opportunity to be inspired and to, you know, thank the people that inspired me. And as an older musician, I get to inspire other young black kids to pick up a guitar, pick up a bass, enjoy music. And and it's not just black kids, but, you know, kid, other kids as well. But, you know, unfortunately, you know, with all of the great progress we've made, there is still racial disparities in education and what we're encouraged to do. You know, we're, we are encouraged to pursue athletics and, you know, other things like that. You know, even music to an extent. But, you know, we're kind of pigeonholed in either a bassist or a drummer or, you know, something like that, or hip-hop, you know, to be a producer, which are all great things. But, you know, the guitar is partially an African invention. And so I would like to see more young cats, you know, get hip to guitar and, you know, two styles of music like jazz and even classical and rock and roll. And, um, you know, I think that's really going to be, you know, what, what creates a lot of this utopia that, you know, we, we, we want America to aspire to be. And, um, you know, there are lots of people who say that we are in a post-racial America that doesn't need a Juneteenth celebration. But I dis you know, I disagree for many of the points that I just made. Um, young black kids are told that you can do this, 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 and this. But don't mess with this because that's not who we are or what we do. And so I think things like Juneteenth, Black History Month, um, spaces where we can show kids that, you know what? Yes, you can be a basketball player or a football player. You can also be a rock musician. You can be an astronaut. You can be the president. You can be a school teacher. You you can you can go to the coast and be a surf bum. Um, you know, and and you don't have to fit a trope or a pattern. And I think that that instruction can come by providing safe spaces. For young minority youths until America is a safe space and I really do hope that day comes sooner than later so anyway that is my personal connection and um, journey through the celebration of Juneteenth and today I'm going to be putting out a lot of videos uh, variations on my videos uh, that you usually see, I will be doing a uh, my comic book playlist featuring and out uh, featuring some music. Um, probably doing action figure impact. I don't think I'll be doing any unboxings because, yeah, I ran through my action figure money. But I'll do some reviews. Maybe talk about this guy and the history that he's made. Um, you know, so I'll, I'll do some action figure uh, closer looks. And uh, so stay tuned to the channel, leave your comments, and uh, let me know what you think. If you have any questions about Juneteenth, leave them in the bottom, and um, I will try to give you my perspective. And if I don't know an answer, I'll go look it up. Google is free, and uh, we can have a little dialogue. 
So anyway, y'all be easy. Enjoy, enjoy Juneteenth. And I will see you next time. Until then, keep buying the action figures. Keep reading in comic books. And I am out.